Sergeant Horner is here to see you. Well, I, I don't want to see him, Nurse. Oh, you said earlier on you might as well get it over with. I'm scared. Sergeant, can sit down? Thank you, Nurse. Sorry to trouble you again, Mr. Brigson. What do you keep calling me that for? Come now, sir, do be sensible about this. I know that's your name. So do you. So do the Jape Novelty Company. You see, we're beginning to make some sense out of this whole business. Inspector Wrigley of the Gorton CID will be down to see you this afternoon. Oh. And I just wondered if you'd like to tell me a little about yourself beforehand. I'm not saying anything. We well, don't have to, of course. But I thought you'd like to know our investigations are beginning to bear fruit at last. Look, Sergeant, will it do me any good to talk now? Not as far as I'm concerned, but it may save the inspector a little time. My name is Brixon. Archie Brixon. Some You're a traveller for the Jape Novelty Company. Some time ago I got into trouble financially. That's what we thought. I started to collect cash deposits from the customers without paying them in. I see. Mm. On the day of the accident, I knew it was only a question of time before I was found out and I'd spent all the money. So you sold your car? Yeah, I sent the proceeds to m my wife and then had the father and mother of a binge here in Oxbridge, where I'd wound up. How did you get into the Royal Hotel? Well, the porter on duty that night was a friend of mine. I was drunk and I'd been through the cash and he fixed me up with a room on the QT. I'm afraid I let him down badly, but you won't blame him, will you? Oh, we know nothing about that, sir. Plus, I have to start shooting my mouth off. Uh, do you want to finish the story, sir? I suppose so. I knew it was all up with me. It all seems hazy now, but in the morning I was going to kill myself with a gas fire. I was lying there, and the next thing, there was this pain, and, and the ambulance, and all I remember clearly was waking up in the hospital. Why didn't you tell them who you were? I wanted time to think. For all I knew, no one would find out who I was. Why should they? I didn't want my wife coming down here. How could I face her? We traced your name through the registration of the car you sent to uh, Temple's garage. You also checked with Harbison's, the toy shop. <laughs> I couldn't get a deposit out of them, I remember. They were the end of the line. Do you want to tell me any more, sir? There isn't any more. Your inspector will arrest me, I suppose. Well, that's not for me to say, Mr. Brixon. Nothing's changed, you know, since that night at the hotel. What do you mean by that, sir? I'll still put an end to everything, somehow or other. Oh, come now, sir. That's not a very sensible attitude to take. They went to a lot of trouble to save you that night. I made the mistake of getting drunk. Next time, I'll stay sober. Things aren't as bad as all that, sir. There are others who've gone wrong and faced up to the consequences. It'll be prison for larceny, won't it? Well, it may well be. Well, the rest will wait for the inspector. He'll probably want a statement from you. I'm not scared of going into prison. But I'm scared of coming out. You'll never get me as far as a court alive. I'm sure that would save us all a lot of trouble, but it seems rather a waste. Morning, Mr. Brixton. Oh, Sergeant, everything all right? Fine, thank you, nurse. Um, has Mr. X got a name yet? Well, I should ask him. Thanks for your help. Good morning. All right. It's Brigson. Archie Brigson. Oh, really, Peter, you might have told me beforehand. But you must have known days ago that you were going to lecture tonight. You forgot. Oh, all right. No, I, I'm sure it won't happen again. It's all right. Never mind. Well, yes, I was looking forward to dinner tonight. Don't lose any sleep on my account, though, will you? But I'm not being sarcastic. All right, I apologize. Yes, yes, it's all right, Peter. Goodbye. Oh, that man. And tell Dr. McAlpine that I've arranged for Sir Richard to come down on Monday, and will he please make sure that everyone knows yes. I don't want the delays we had during Professor Halpin's visit? Very good. I shall be at home this afternoon if I'm wanted. So. Hello, sister. What are you doing down here? Oh, good morning, sir. 
It's just part of the survey. Yes, I heard you were on work study. Oh, well, at the moment, I'm just mapping out the ground for Mr. Fettens. He moves a great deal more slowly. Wouldn't you like a job on maternity, sister? You used to cope so well when we were at Tembridge. Well, at the moment, I'm managing quite well on the plain clothes side, thank you. And very attractive, too, if I may say so. Though the Oxbridge uniform shows womanhood off at its best. <laughs> well, um, if you'll excuse me. I'm in your way. I'm so sorry. What are you doing? Well, they're just a few measurements. Mr. Ferrens will require a great deal of data before he moves in. Yes, it all sounds very technical. Would you like to tell me um, how it's going to affect us here? Well, I could explain. But, but you haven't time. Why don't you have dinner with me tonight? Then you can tell me all about it. Well, that's very kind of you, I think Roo, I should be free about 8.30. We might meet for a drink at the Royal Hotel first. Well, actually, I, I'm afraid... You're on duty tonight. No, no, it's, it's not that I'm on duty. Perhaps I could manage another evening. I was going out, but that's been put off. You mean you can come out tonight? Yes. Good. I shall try to be on time. Au revoir. Mm. Au revoir. So that's the way it was. Uh, well, I expect it does you good getting off your chest like. Extraordinary story. Good old Archie Brixen always sure of a laugh. I need pay for the drinks. I'll tell you one thing. None of that lot will want to know me now. Ah, uh, it's always a way, mate. I don't know what to do. The police will be here with the handcuffs before long. It doesn't seem as though it's me somehow. Yet, I took the cash all right. Well, you had a pretty good spell as the mystery patient of men's surgical. Not much fun with all this pay, Colonel. Fun. I haven't had a real day's fun since I started cheating the company, and now it's too late. Oh, no, man. It's never too late. Joe, you don't mind if I call you Joe. Depends what kind of person you are. I'm a realist. Of course it's too late. I'm finished. Why go on? There's no point in just being sorry for yourself. There's no point in anything. I'll tell you something. Before the fire, I was desperate, gone to pieces. But now, I'm myself again, quite calm, happy almost. I won't face the boss, won't face the wife, and I can't go to prison, because before they can get me out of here, I shall kill myself. I'm being very stupid, Brixton. That's what the sergeant said. I don't know about that. Life under this kind of shame isn't life at all. And if you were honest instead of just being kind, you would agree with me. I don't know. It beats me how you can just lie there and talk about it. Just like that. It don't seem natural. It was worse keeping quiet. Not saying anything, wondering, wondering when they'd find out. Well, if you went through with it all, and when you came out, there'd always be a chance that someday you could pay the money back. Or am I being old-fashioned? What about the wife? What about her? Well, she won't divorce me. She'll stick by me. I don't want to be stuck by her. I want her free to forget me and go off and build a new life. We haven't any kids. She's young enough. Beside her happiness, the finances of the Jape Novelty Company mean nothing to me. Yeah, well, your finances did when you started this lark. That's done. You know, I'm not sure I like lying next to a chap as messed up as you are. In a mind, I mean. I mean, getting in trouble with the law is one thing, but it gives me a nasty feeling to hear you talking about killing yourself and that. All calm-like, as if it was all worked out. Yes, it's all right, Simon. I've already heard and had it out with him. Oh, same. Or re alternative arrangements have been made. Oh. Well, that's a pity. I was rather hoping to uh, step into his shoes. Oh. Well, that's very nice of you, Simon. Now I'll never know whether you meant it or not, thanks all the same. Well, who is the uh, lucky substitute for our absent-minded orthopod? Um, I don't think I can stand here chatting all day. Oh. You mean you're not going to tell me? I really don't think it's any of your business. Nurse. Yes. 
What is it, Colonel Turvey? My dear, I think there's something that you ought to talk about. Yes, sir, what is it? I think the staff should know about the state of mind of our friend in there. State of mind, sir? Well, you know he's in trouble. Well, the staff had heard about it, but, um, you know, we're not allowed to interfere into patients' private lives. Well, that depends. I've been thinking about some of the things he's been telling Masters and me. Oh, I know, of course, one would expect him to be overwrought after what he's gone through. But all the same, from the way he talks, there's a possibility of danger. Danger? Yes, I'd, I'd like to have a word with one of the doctors. Oh, yes, of course, Colonel Toby. What kind of danger? Well, if he were to get hold of any drugs, he might try to kill himself. Nothing. Just a bit of pain here. Oh, well, uh, Dr. Forrester will be along in a minute. You can tell him all about it. It's not the burns, nurse. It's something inside. Just do tell him about it. Stop. I'm worried about Mr. Briggs. But why didn't you tell us about this pain before, Mr. Brixon? Well, it didn't seem to bother me much beside the other pain. It was probably there all the time, and I. I didn't really feel it till yesterday. Yesterday? Before lunch, and then again before supper. It's nothing, Doctor. Well, would you like to show me just where that pain is? It's just about there. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll try not to hurt you, but I must find out just exactly where this is. Now, tell me if it hurts you, will you? Nothing here. What about here? This? I see. All right, thank you. Thank you, nurse. Nurse. Yes. Are you going to write about something, sir? No, I'm just going to make a note for the surgeons. I'll put him on an ulcer diet for a day or two, and then we'll see how he gets on with that. You don't think he's taken anything, do you? Well, if he's taking something in small doses, it might have this sort of result, pain before meals, but uh, it's hardly the way somebody would choose to do away with themselves now, is it? I don't know. Thought you were going to talk to Mr. Briggs. No, I didn't think that would be very wise. Well, why not? You'd be surprised how many people try and commit suicide just because they believe people don't think they'll have the guts to do it. And then you see any sort of sensible conversation about it would be interpreted by them as a, well, a challenge. Still, if he's in that frame of mind, we'd better keep an eye on him. I'll have a word with Sister about it. And with Mr. Dawson. Hello, Grandpa. How are you, my dear? Mm. How are you? I thought you'd like these. Oh, I'm very beautiful. Thank you, Sue. Thank, Thank you. Campbell, shall I get a for you? Yes, please. Uh, nurse, nurse. You won't forget to bring them back, will you? Oh. I suppose now you're better, you're starting to pull everyone's legs again, eh, Grandpa? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't you? What about poor Mr. Dawson and your solicitor? What about him? Oh, you heard I met him the other night. The other night? After you saw him here? Uh, that's right. And where did you meet him? Down at the Royal in the bar. They were having a bachelor party before the wedding. My dear Sue, what on earth were you doing at a bachelor party? Well... <laughs> I was having dinner with Mummy and Daddy, and the men were in the bar. Oh, I see. And you just strolled over as bold as brass and said, Hello, Mr. Dawson. That's right. Oh. And then I suppose, doubtless, you told him not to be alarmed by the silly old buffer in his ward. Of course I didn't. 
We kept off the subject most carefully. I wonder. <laughs> All the same, if you are going to sue him for knocking you down, I do think you ought to get on with it. It's rather hard luck on him being kept in suspense. Hard luck on him? What about me? Look at me. Just a wreck. That irresponsible young hooligan doesn't give a damn. Oh, Grandpa, you are being naughty. You know it wasn't his fault. Not his fault? Oh, dear. Mr. Brigson, this is Inspector Wrigley. I don't suppose they'll let up now, will they? Do you think he'll do anything desperate, Mr. Masters? What? What was them two in there? No, I mean, while he's in hospital. I don't know. Those drugs make him feel pretty lousy, don't they? Are you worried about him? I mean, by what he's been saying? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I am. And look, there's another thing. That pain inside his stomach. He never said nothing about that until you noticed, isn't that right? Mm. Yeah, well, why not? And then there's the way he talks. All, all calm and sensible, you'd think. But you can't get through to him all the same. Thank you, nurse. Do you like me to leave the screens up or shall I take them away? I don't mind, lass. Please yourself. I'll move them away then. I'll bring it next time I come. <laughs> oh, hello, Miss Campbell. Oh, hello, Dr. Forrester. How long are you going to keep the Colonel here? Oh, don't well, ask him. He can't stay. That's for Mr. Dawson. He's conspicuous by his absence. He's probably in the Royal Hotel waiting for you to pick him up again. <laughs> and I'll be there if he waits long enough. I promised to collect some things at Mummy's this evening. Well, I must make a note to warn him then. <laughs> Any word from the honeymooners? No, not a word, not a whisper. Well, I must get on. Mm, Bye. Me too. Goodbye, Grandpa. Uh, take care. Here, don't forget to give my love to your mother and father. Come again soon. Nice see you. Oh, nurse. Yes? Um, Mr. Charles Wood, you know, the architect. He was looking for you this morning. Did he find you? Yes, thank you. Yes, I thought he would. Here. How'd you get on, mate? Mate? I wonder when the police are going to stop calling me sir. Well, what happened? Well, you see, they can't.